Good morning and welcome to the 5 Before Podcast. This is John Belangia and we apologize. We're running a few minutes late behind. I'm mean, a few minutes late and it is my fault. So I apologize for those of you that have been waiting and uh, glad that you're joining with us today on what has turned out to be finally a sunny day for the first time in a what feels like a long time and uh, it has been a long time. So hope you're enjoying the uh the sun and the blue skies and if uh, if there's anything as we are on with you today that you want us to pray for uh, we want you to constantly know uh, that you can you know message at any time that you have a prayer request or a need or um, even if you need clarification on anything that we talk about on here we would love to have that interaction with you uh, we told you yesterday one of the things that uh, that we're doing uh, over the next several days, again, I think it's going to be 12 more days after today, if I remember correctly, um, is, uh, is I want to talk to you about fasting because we have called a, uh, a corporate fast um, at our church. And I know many churches around the country are doing the same thing this time of year. And uh, some of you may be fasting and there may be... Um, a lot of questions that you have and hopefully over the next few days we'll be able to answer those for you and give you some clarification but uh we uh, started yesterday with letting you know that fasting is a discipline that we engage it should be a part um, a normal part of the christian's life Uh, this is not extracurricular activity as we would say Um, this is actually part of what it is to be a follower of jesus to try to walk in this and there are a lot of different ways that we can do it and we can enter into it and we'll look at all of that but Today, I want to remind you um, that um, when we fast, one of the big things that should happen both before we enter into the fast and as we go through the season and process of fasting, um, it's very important that we search ourselves, uh, we search our hearts, we search our lives, uh, because there are a few things that the scripture teaches us about fasting. For example, Jeremiah chapter 14, verse uh, number 12 says, Although they fast, I will not listen to their cry. Though they offer burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Instead, I will destroy them with the sword, famine, and plague. And what's interesting is, is this passage is written to the people of God. So again, any time in the Old Testament, God communicates with the people of Israel. Um, you know, you have to understand that as a New Testament believer, that those are our people because we've been grafted into that. And what He says here is, He says, "Listen, guys, you are fasting." for the wrong reasons. And he says, just because you fast, and I want to make sure that that you know this, just because you fast does not mean God is going to hear, and it does not mean God is going to answer. That's why the searching part of the fast is very important. Like, this is not uh, some manipulative tool to get God to do what we want Him to do. We're not trying to manipulate God uh, to do things in our lives. Um, This is time that we are sincerely wanting to get alone with Him, hear Him, spend time with Him, see him move in our lives and he says listen if that's not your motive if if you're just doing this as a religious practice because that's what was happening the people of israel they were fasting and they were still going through their religious activity but their heart was not with god and their heart was not for god and they were living lives that were very contrary to the life that god would have them live and because of that uh it created uh not um a conduit for god to show up and a conduit for god to move in their life but it actually separated that uh that move from god in their life it separated them from being able to hear god speak into their lives because they were doing it with the wrong motives for the wrong reasons and they were doing it without really taking the time to search themselves. And so you need to do that, uh, search yourself. Here's another example of that in Isaiah 58. This is a little bit longer. In verse 1, it says, Shout it aloud. Do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the house of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways, as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of God. They ask me for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near. They seem eager for God to come near, he says. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of fasting, you do as you please. You exploit your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. 
Is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for a man to humble himself. Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying on sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? And I love this. And one of the things that I love about this passage so much is he says, you know, there are a lot of people who go through religious activity and they seem to do it because they seem to want God and they seem to want to see God and they seem to want to please God. But in reality, God is not the center of those activities. The center of those activities are actually themselves. And the center of this activity can't be ourself. In fact, he says, if you do this, you bow your head, you humble yourself. He says, that's all you're going to see happen is making it about you and what you see and what you experience naturally through fasting, that's all you're going to get. He says, but what this passage reminds us of is he says, basically, you know, my heart is to act. My heart is to move in your life. God says, my heart is to show up and to do something in your life. He says, I'm not going to do it if it's about you. But he says, if you will take the time to stop and to search yourself. And in this passage, he actually talks to them about the sin of their life. He says, listen, don't go into fasting without taking time to ask God to search the sins of your life. He even specifies their sins. And he says, you know, your sins in this passage in Isaiah 58, he says, your sin is you're, you're not doing a very good job loving your brother and sister. You're not doing a very good job of, of being together in community. You're not being doing a very good job of investing into each other. Um, and so maybe that's a big issue for you. That's specifically that, you know, God says, if, you, if you're not able to love your brother and sister, um, you're going to waste your time with a fast. So stop and take a moment. So, OK, God, let me deal with these things in my heart first or, or let me rephrase that. Let me allow you to deal with these things in my heart first so that as I go into this fast and I go through the season of fasting um, that I can actually see you show up because that is God's heart to show up in your life. So so my prayer for you today as we're in day two of our fasting uh, series and um, I think we're on day let's see Sunday Monday Tuesday Wednesday we're on day four of the fast that we called corporately some of you are further into that journey you started earlier than that um, but if you haven't yet done it let's just take a moment today let's just invite the Holy Spirit to come into our lives let's invite him to search us let's invite him to search our hearts our motives the sin of our life let him point those things out so that we can repent from those things and we can move back towards God our father and he can show up and move in a mighty way in our fasting we're gonna uh, start looking at all the things that we see people received in scripture from fasting um, and there are a lot of amazing things that you're gonna see over the next few days that's what we'll pick up with tomorrow so you need to make sure that you stop um, and do this with me today so that we can see God do these next uh, these next 11 things in our life. Um, fasting is powerful. God does some incredible activity when we fast, but he's not going to do it um, if our heart's not in the right position, in the right posture, if, we, if we're sinful. And I'm not saying you're perfect. I'm saying if you're living a life of sin habitually and you're not dealing with that sin in your life, God says, I'm not going to I'm not going to honor a life that isn't living that isn't being lived for me. I'm not saying you don't slip up and mess up. I'm talking about habitual sin in your life. Let's ask God to highlight those things, enlighten us, and deal with them. So let's pray this morning. And again, share this. Uh, we had a lot of uh, people uh, comment me personally yesterday just thanking me for sharing on fasting. So thank you guys for, for letting me know that this is uh, impactful for you. Uh, and the next 11 days are going to get really good because it's going to show all the things that we can receive from God uh, from fasting. Um, let's pray. God, we thank you today um, that you've given us another day to live for you, um, another day to uh, for some of us, fast and pray another day to evangelize the world, another day to pray for the sick, another day to minister to those that are broken. Um, but as we're engaging all of these things, I just pray right now that we would all stop and we would just pray this simple prayer that says, search me, uh, search my heart, search my motives. Am I doing this for you? Uh, I pray for those that have not yet entered into the fast that maybe today is that is that thing that's going to push them over that line to say, man, I'm ready to step into a fasting season because they stop and they say, okay, God, I want my heart to be aligned. I want my heart to be in the right posture with you. And uh, I just pray, God, that you would get our hearts focused on you and not on ourselves. 
not on what we're doing, not on the tradition of fasting. Uh, we don't want to come become dogmatic with uh, the fasting principles and say, oh, you know, you can't do it this way. You can't listen, God. This is just a time for us to let go of ourselves, focus on you. I pray that we would do that. And I also pray right now that for those that are out there that um, haven't invited you to search their heart and their life for sin, I pray they would take a minute and they would do that uh, right now. And they would just say, search me, God, and, and just highlight and uh, show me the sin of my life that I need to deal with so that um, I can hear you in greater ways, so that I can see you move in greater ways. God, I don't want anything to hinder. I don't want anything to detour me from seeing you move and hearing your voice in my life. And so show us that sin. And then, God, give us the strength to repent from those things, God, to turn away from those things and to move towards you. Uh, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much. And uh, we'll be back with you for, with part three tomorrow. Uh, share this with somebody and, and, and invite someone uh, to fast with you. If, if you still haven't joined, it's not too late. You can do it any day, any time. Uh, and again, if you have any questions or need any clarification, uh, you can comment in the uh, comment bar below. You can send us a message through the app, through the website, whatever, uh, and we'll get back in touch with you and answer those questions as much as we possibly can. So uh, we hope you have an awesome Wednesday, and uh, we love you guys. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you tomorrow.